Hey everyone, welcome to a new video here at Sublime Traders. I'm Logical Orange, and this is the second video for a series that will help you create a cryptocurrency trading bot with a market making mindset. So, in the first video, we created and installed our Hummingbot Market Maker bot on our Google Cloud console, so on our virtual machine, and we deployed it. In this video, we are going to create a new strategy, a basic strategy that will help us understand the process and deploy it on Binance. So the last time we were here, we have just installed our Hummingbot bar Market Maker bot and we took a tour of the commands. And right now we are going to start directly and create a new strategy. And we are going to do this by typing create. And now we will be guided. So the this is a Python program. It's a program written in the Python language. and. Uh, it has a nice step-by-step -step, uh, configuration process. So we will be guided throughout the whole process. So the first step is what is your market making strategy and the pure market making strategy. This is the basic, the most basic one. So pure, I'm going to type pure and I'm going to tab and enter. And now I'm going to connect it to an exchange. So which exchange do I want to connect it to? I want to connect it to Binance because I have ad added my API keys. And now I need to choose my trading pair. And in order to select the best trading pair possible for my, um, for my strategy, I need to go out of this uh, tab and into another. And for, um, for the example of this video, I'm going to show you a tool that, in my opinion, is very powerful and that allows you to detect patterns. It basically has a draw board right here where you can basically draw your pattern. And if there is a pattern that is similar to your drawing, well, it will be identified and shown to you in the list below. So for this example, I selected something that goes up and down because this is what we want with market making bots. If I want, I can restart. For example, if I want this, if I want this, sorry, I will search. And well, the, the pattern has been recognized with some, some pairs right here, uh, more or less uh, that are following my drawing. So it's okay, but I don't want this. This was just to show you how the tool works. It is a very good tool. It can help you identify patterns that you like trading generally. So I myself like to trade uh, cap and handle patterns. This would be uh, something like this. Let's see if we have something like this available. Yeah, well, more or less, more or less, we can see a cap and handle here, but has already played out. Uh, something, uh, no, not here. Yeah, and we can see multiple cap and handles here. But we are not looking for this. We are, in fact, looking for a pattern that does this, more or less. Let's see if we find something. And we have some, we have some pairs that are fitting our description more. Yeah, th this could do it. This could do it, but now it depends on how you draw the lines also. So if you if you draw too too much up and down, it's uh, yeah it's logical that you won't really find what you are looking for. But if you draw like one, two, something like this, it looks like an M here, but it can be a pattern. You can find something that you you might use for your market making. But so this is an option. Or I already uh, found the, the pair I want to trade for my uh, for my example and I'm going to add that to my to my trading bot the second way you can identify patterns that you want to trade for your market making bot is by using um, well the crypto scanner from uh, TradingView which is extremely powerful and I'm not sure that that many know how to use it effectively it has so many filters it gives you a headache so you have the, the potential to, to choose whatever you want here. If we want to, uh, to find a pair that has a relative volume that is below 
let's say below I don't know a, a number. You can uh, you can find pairs by change. You can find pairs by volume and so on and so forth. So this is another possibility that you might uh, take into consideration when choosing a pair for your market making bot. But yeah, you need to understand that the market making bot loves sideways action. It's like a grid bot, but it has a lot of other advantages. So let's say the price leaves your initial range. The market making bot can adapt and can identify another range and based on your parameters can take profit or create volume, whatever you want in that given range. So these are the two possibilities that you, you can use for identifying um, trends that you like for your market making bot. In my uh, example, I'm going to use HBAR because I like the way it's sideways for the, um, for the last period of, of uh, I mean, the five minute charts. And I think we cover about two days right here. And for my example is more than enough. But of course, there are other uh, pairs that can be used in this. So I have HBAR that is identified as a potential pair for my market making bot and I'm going to go back to my bot. So I'm going to select HBAR with USDT and now the bot asks me how far away from the mid price do you want me to place the first bid order. This is the buy. This is where I want to buy. How far away from the mid price do I want to place my first buy order and I, I will for the example of this video place 0.5% and now it asks me for the first ask order so for the first sell order 0.5% this means that we have a difference between our first buy and our first sell of 1% and now how often do you want to cancel and replace bids and asks in seconds well, usually this depends on the volatility of the market. I tend to like to, to leave it at somewhere around 360 seconds. Now, what is the amount of age bar per order? Now, you need to take into consideration that, that any, any pair on Binance or on any other market has uh, a minimum amount per order. So if you want to test this, just test with the minimum allowed. I will just place like 100 H bar per, uh, per order right here. And now the bot asks us, would you like to use the ping pong feature and alternate between buy and sell orders after fills? In this case, I will choose no. Ping ponging is not what we want here because it will create too many orders and I don't want this in this strategy. So no. And now we can configure, we can give a name to this strategy. I'm just going to leave it like this. Okay. And right now the configuration, the basic configuration of the strategy is finished. So let's test it. I'm going to type start. And I see that the bot is working. It has created a limit maker buy and it has cre created a limit maker sell. So we can check this on the chart and we can see Yes, we have a price difference of 0.5% from the mid price. I have a sell right here, uh, a buy right here and a sell right here. So I'm going to stop it right now because I see that it works. And I'm going to move into the advanced configuration. This is where it gets fun and also tedious because you need to play around with parameters and with charts and measure volatility in order to establish the best uh, the best trend trading configuration you can for your bot. So config. And right now I have the um, all the configuration parameters for my strategy. Some of them were already created. So strategy exchange name, market, the bid spread, the minimum spread, or the refresh time, and so on and so forth. Now we want so if we want to modify the bid spread or the bid ask spread, which is we can just uh, type config bid. We can tab it. Okay. And we can modify it from 0 0.5 to 0 0.8, 
for example. And now we type config again. And it will be updated right here. Now, in order for this to be effective on the trading side, if you are already running a bot, you will need to stop it and restart it. Well, right now, if I'm going to start it, we can see that the bot has placed the orders and the buy, uh, the buy order is a bit further away from the mid price than the sell order. So we can use this when the market is slightly descending. So we have like a, a trending channel that is that has a slight angle to the downside. We can do this, but we need to know also that we won't have a huge eruption to the downside. Now, this is, uh, I, I, I hope this is clear for now. Let's go back to the config and see what else we can use. So order amount also we can, uh, we can use it the order refresh tolerance percentage is a feature that is very well documented on the documentation site for Hummingbot. So I recommend that you read about it. It's an it is an advanced feature and uh, you should use it only if you know what you are doing. For now, I'm going to leave it at zero. So order amount uh, 100 H bar for every, uh, every order that I place. And uh, right now we have price ceiling and price floor. What does this mean? So price ceiling means that if we pass a certain level on the higher side, I will not buy anymore. Now this sounds insane because, well, if we pass a certain ceiling on the higher side, it means that we have a breakout. And why shouldn't we buy? Well, the market making uh, mindset says otherwise. If you pass a certain uh, ceiling, so a certain level on the higher side, you are out of your range and you will only sell because you want to reduce your inventory. Inventory is a huge part of a market making strategy. So uh, we will talk about inventory a bit later. So the price floor is the same thing, but on the bottom side. So we will not buy anymore if the price goes below a certain level. Order levels. Order levels means how many orders do I want to place. I can do it with one or I can add multiple orders. If I add multiple orders, I will transform my, uh, my market making bot into a market making grid bot. So let's do it so you see how it, it is done. So config. Uh, order levels. Enter, how many orders do you want to place on both sides? So let's say 10, and I will start. And here we go. We have a grid market making bot running directly in our exchange. You are not paying for it, contrary to, to three commas. We have a lot of control on it, uh, contrary to three commas, and we can do whatever we want with it. We can also use exponential orders if we want to. For now, I'm going to stop this and I'm going to go back to config. And I'm going to change it back to one. Both sides one. And now I'm back to normal. So order levels means that we can uh, turn our market making bot into a market making grid bot. So order level amount, this would be the increase every time an order is placed. So we have an exponential growth in orders and the order level spread is the difference between each orders. Now inventory. Inventory is what I like the most about this market making strategy. And it allows you to not depass a certain amount of your base asset if the price goes against your strategy, because it can, it always does, and you need to protect your strategy. So I'm here trading with my market making bot up and down in this range right here. And all of a sudden the price leaves the range, be it on the high side or on the lower side. Well, we can limit our exposure with something called inventory. Inventory means the exposure to your base asset. And in this case, our base asset is Hadera hash graph, so H bar. So I want to limit my exposure to H bar. If I want to do this, and it is uh, recommended that you do this, you will need to use the inventory skew 
configuration. So I can manage my inventory right here with these two configurations right here. So inventory SKU and inventory target base percentage. We will start with enabling inventory SKU because by default it is disabled. So config inventory. Would you like to enable? Yes. And now the second part of of the configuration would be to allocate the percentage for the base asset. This means how much do I want from my whole account to allocate to my base asset? And by default, it is at 50%, but because I maybe want to trade on multiple pairs, I will lower it to 10%. So let's do it like this. So config, inventory, target base percentage, space, 10%. And now we will have a maximum of 10% in H bar out of all our account. And this will happen even if the price will go out of the range on the lower side. So the next configurations we could look at are, well, the inventory price, we won't use it right here, hanging orders. Well, this is when a market has problems executing trades. This happens less and less with Binance right now, so we, we can leave it like it is. Order optimization enabled, no need. It will, uh, if we enable this, it will look for multiple um, levels in the order book in order to find the bad, best spread automatically you can use this and test this i i i did and i didn't really like the way it uh, reacted so i don't use this anymore transactions costs well this would be helpful so i'm going to enable config add transaction costs would you like to add transaction costs automatically to order prices i'm going to type yes and explain if I type yes, it will do two things. One, it will add the transaction costs to the spread difference from the mid price. The second thing it does is that it will show you, uh, when you type history, it will show you the, the total amount of fees that you paid since the beginning of your strategy. So this is very helpful in order to identify if the strategy is good or not. And right now we are going to finish the configuration of the um, of this exact strategy. Before I want to also show you the price source. If you want to connect another price source for your uh, for your trades, uh, you can connect a custom API, and you can also give it a custom interval for updating. This is very very good. If you want to um, to use a very high frequency trading market maker um, bot. However, you just need to take into consideration that the fees will be there, so uh, you need to just calculate correctly before you start. Order override, we don't need, and the others are just um, other configurations that we will not use right now. So we have this running, we are going to start it, and uh, it will be running like it is supposed to. So right now, I, um, I forgot to tell you that if we don't have enough inventory, it will prioritize buys. Why? Because, well, I set a percentage of 10% in my uh, inventory. So I want 10%. I don't want less. I don't want more. So the bot will take this into consideration and it will prioritize buying before selling. So this can also be used when you see that the range is slightly heading on the lower side. So you can have better entries for future sales. So now you're almost a market maker. You know how to install and configure your first market making strategy, a base strategy that has a lot of com configurations available. You can play around with them and I highly encourage you to. And uh, in the next video, we are going to configure a similar strategy, but with some more conditions, a strategy that I like a lot and I really use it actively. So this is all for today, guys. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. We gon' make sure you never miss a trade again. Watch how you get paid over and over again. Account management.